This video will work you through the process of writing figure legends in ecology and evolution. Here's a basic figure. Um, what I did was go out to an old field habitat just west of Bicentennial Hall and I looked in the flower tops of Queen Anne's Lace to see whether or not they were being used by a webworm. And what we have here is a graph, a frequency histogram, which shows the level of use as uh, none, low, and high. Number of flowers is the y-axis. And what I want to do is write a legend which explains this to a reader. I've actually set this up as a title as a way for me to work through this. This isn't the way you would actually present it, but I think it makes it clear what goes into each section. So the first part of the legend is going to be your header. It orients the reader to the figure, and it's the text that in the results narrative tells the reader which figure to, you're going to be talking about next. And it traditionally just says figure one or figure two. One piece of information that you need to understand about numbering this is that you number the figures after you write the text. So the first figure that you talk about in the text gets the number of figure one. It may be the last figure that you draw, but it's still figure one because it's the first one you talk about. The main part, first main part of the figure is the title, and the title, the purpose of that is to provide the reader with indication of the goal or the question that you're asking. For this particular uh, project, the goal was to look at the use of Queen Anne's lace by the parson of Webworm. Note that we've been very specific here. We've used the Latin genus and species name for both the flower and for the insect. You want to try to use Latin genus and species names whenever you can because they are unambiguous. The next portion of the text is going to give you the methods or the critical aspects of data collection. Now this should not be a full bore methods section. It should be a just presenting the really critical, important pieces of the methods that's needed to understand the figure. All of the details about the methods would be done in the materials and methods section. So let's take a look at this text here. I've talked about the number of webworms per flower, that's my y-axis, was counted in the fall of 2004. I thought that the date and the year was important because we know that these are quite variable in ecological studies in an old field habitat, because we're going to give the reader an indication of that habitat use, in Middlebury, in Middlebury, Vermont, the location. I then want to talk about how plants were chosen. Plants were selected haphazardly, and the top flower on each plant was inspected. So this tells them how I chose the plants, and this tells them what part of the plant I used. And then finally, I looked for the presence of webworms. Something that is going to be common to every study that you do is the sample size. You always want to present information on the sample size, and in this case, n equals 20 plants. The last part of the figure legend is how to use the figure or how to read the figure, and it's important information that's needed to understand the graph. In this case, the category low and the category, I need to define the categories low and high for the reader. Category low is one webworm per flower. Category high is greater than one webworm per flower. So that when the reader looks at the graph, they have an understanding what these words low and high mean. If I actually changed my x-axis so that it was 0, 1, greater than 1, then I wouldn't need to have that kind of information. Now, I said that this is not the way you would present it to the reader. If you were going to use this information and show it the way you would show it to the reader is just to put it as a paragraph. So that each of these sections then become part of the narrative paragraph. You also would not color code it. It would all just be in black font or black color text. But I've color coded this to match with the table. If it helps you to use a table to do this kind of uh, legend construction, then feel free to do that. I think that's a great tool that you can use to help you make um, sense out of what needs to go into legends. Let's look at a little bit more complicated graph. So here's a graph that looks at an average um, or mean. It's got some indication of error bars on here. 
Um, it's got two different bars, two different species. And here we've given you the collection information for this. This might be a good point for you to actually hit the pause button on the video and think about that table and what would you put for each of these. The header is pretty straightforward. It's just going to be figure and a number. But what would you make as the title? What would you put as the methods? And what would you put as how to read the graph? Once you've spent some time making thinking about that and maybe making some notes on that in your lab notebook, proceed to the next slide and see how we did it. All right, so here's the uh, legend that we came up with. Again, you've got the header, figure one. The title in this case, I, we've chosen to use the effect of honeysuckle on the mean number of native saplings compared to the effect of sugar maples. We've got information on the data collection, again here location, honeysuckles. Now, if I was going to plus this up, I would have the Latin genus and species name for honeysuckles here. The size of the plot, 25 meters squared. That all honeysuckles were used. I think that's important. The number of native tree saplings was counted, so my y variable. How we located the matched maples. Sample size. All of this important information. Note for this graph, we didn't put anything about when the data were collected, whether it was fall or spring, because that doesn't matter. We could have done the same study in the fall or the same study in the spring and gotten the equivalent results. Um, the how to use the graph here is a little bit different than it was in the previous example. I have error bars, so I need to say what I'm actually plotting as the error bars. Our Standard is going to be the standard error, so that's what you will always report rather than standard deviation or variance. And I guess some statistical details here. Now, if standard error and T observed don't make any sense to you right now, don't worry about it. We'll talk about those um, later on in the class. But I provide those as an example of, again, how, the kinds of information that you put into how to look for um, the data, or how to use the graph, rather. Um, this gives you a very brief tutorial. Um, if you find that the table approach works when you're making drafts, then please feel free to use it. And happy graphing!